Introducing The Thief of Baghdad, a classic 1940 film that weaves a captivating tale of adventure and magic. As our protagonist navigates through a world of enchantment, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions with funny, shocking, and sad moments. Have you ever had a cherished memory linked to this timeless movie? Or perhaps has it left an indelible impact on your life? Keep watching because we're about to unravel some interesting facts. Afterward, share your most treasured memory or personal experience related to this film. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a journey into the cinematic past and let the nostalgia flow. The 1940 film, The Thief of Baghdad, garnered significant acclaim during its time, leaving an enduring impact on popular culture. Directed by Ludwig Berger, Michael Powell, and Tim Wellen, it transported audiences into a fantastical world with a captivating narrative and groundbreaking special effects. Starring Conrad Veidt, Sabu, and June Duprez, the movie showcased a timeless tale of love, magic, and heroism. Upon its release, the film received widespread praise for its innovative use of technicolor and visual effects. Its reception was marked by admiration for lush set designs, intricate costumes, and the dynamic performances of the cast. Audiences were captivated by the fantastical escapades of the titular character and the magical world he navigated. The impact of this cinematic masterpiece on popular culture is evident in the numerous adaptations and spin-offs that followed. Its success paved the way for a string of fantasy films in the subsequent decades, influencing the genre's visual and narrative elements. The swashbuckling adventure, combined with the allure of Arabian Nights, left an indelible mark on cinematic storytelling. Merchandise inspired by the film, ranging from action figures to posters, further solidified its cultural significance. The enduring popularity of The Thief of Baghdad also led to radio adaptations and theatrical re-releases, ensuring that new generations continued to experience its magic. The movie's legacy is exemplified by its lasting impact on the fantasy genre, shaping the way filmmakers approach storytelling and visual effects in subsequent years. It remains a benchmark for cinematic escapism, with its influence permeating through generations of filmmakers and storytellers. In conclusion, the reception and enduring impact of this cinematic masterpiece are testaments to its brilliance. Its legacy is woven into the fabric of fantasy storytelling, and its influence continues to resonate in the annals of cinematic history. The market-clearing scene in The Thief of Baghdad features predominantly female writers, a consequence of many men being enlisted in the British armed forces during the time. Originally planned to shoot in Africa, the outbreak of World War II redirected the production to the Arizona desert, where scenes in and around the Grand Canyon were filmed. Henry Fonda was initially considered for the role of Jafar, chosen by producer Alexander Korda based on his appearance in two Technicolor films. Korda believed Fonda would present well in close-ups. In summary, the film's market scene showcased mostly female writers due to men's enlistment in the war. The location shifted from Africa to the Arizona desert because of World War II. Henry Fonda was initially eyed for Jafar's role, chosen for his performance in Technicolor films. June Duprez's character in The Thief of Baghdad is notable for being consistently referred to as princess throughout the film, devoid of a given name. The movie also marked the film debut of John Justin, adding a new talent to the cinematic landscape. An interesting facet of The Thief of Baghdad lies in its recognition at the Academy Awards. Despite not receiving a Best Picture nomination, it clinched three Academy Awards for art direction, cinematography, and special effects. This achievement marks it as the first film without a Best Picture nod to secure the most wins at an Oscar ceremony, setting a unique precedent in the history of the awards. In summary, June Duprez's character remains nameless, and John Justin makes his debut in The Thief of Baghdad. The film, despite not being nominated for Best Picture, secured three Academy Awards in a historic Oscar feat. The budget for The Thief of Baghdad skyrocketed due to directorial changes, production shifts to the U.S. during wartime, and various delays. Facing financial strain, the American distributor, United Artists, infused additional funds to ensure the film's completion. Director Michael Powell revealed that the film lacked a complete script, with constant changes made during production. Upon filming in the U.S., the stricter Hayes Office censorship codes led to notable differences in costumes. 
actresses' outfits featured fully buttoned tops to comply with Hayes' office regulations, making it distinguishable from scenes shot in the UK. Despite challenges, the film achieved recognition at the Academy Awards, securing three wins for art direction, cinematography, and special effects, a historic feat for a movie, not nominated in the Best Picture category. In conclusion, The Thief of Baghdad faced budgetary strains, script uncertainties, and censorship adjustments during production. The film's unique journey culminated in Academy Award success, marking a significant achievement in Oscar history. Producer Alexander Korda's rigorous demands led to six different directors working on the film, including his brother Zoltan Korda and renowned art director William Cameron Menzies. Notably, Menzies, who previously contributed to the 1924 version of The Thief of Baghdad, played a key role in both the art department and production. Commencing filming in Britain, the production faced a setback due to the Blitz, prompting a relocation to Hollywood. This shift, induced by German air raids on London, necessitated a reshoot of early scenes featuring Sabu, who had noticeably grown during the extended production hiatus. The Thief of Baghdad's tumultuous production journey reflects the challenges posed by demanding producers, multiple directorial changes, and wartime relocations. William Cameron Menzies' dual role in the film's artistry and production highlights his enduring influence on cinematic works. Vivian Lee, initially cast as the princess in The Thief of Baghdad, was replaced by June Duprez after winning the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. This shift in casting occurred in late 1938, marking a pivotal moment in the film's production. Notably, The Thief of Baghdad holds the distinction of being the first movie to utilize blue screens, a groundbreaking innovation in cinematography. This technical advancement paved the way for future special effects in the film industry. Adding an interesting twist to the narrative, Miles Mallison, the film's screenwriter, makes a significant cameo appearance as the toy-obsessed Sultan of Basra. This cameo injects a unique element into the storyline, showcasing Mallison's involvement beyond just writing. In summary, the casting change involving Vivian Lee, the pioneering use of blue screens, and Miles Mallison's cameo as the Sultan contribute distinct elements to the Thief of Baghdad's history. These aspects, combined with the film's other achievements, mark it as a notable piece in cinematic history. Included in Roger Ebert's Great Movies list, The Thief of Baghdad faced significant disruptions during production. When Great Britain declared war on Germany, director Michael Powell and key crew members were reassigned to direct The Lion Has Wings, a wartime propaganda documentary. Producer Alexander Korda, committed to supporting the war effort, shifted the film's production to the U.S., acquiring a new director and crew. Initially directed by Ludwig Berger, The Thief of Baghdad had 80-year-old Austrian operetta composer Oskar Strauss slated to compose the score. However, Miklos Rosla secured the assignment by playing his melodies adjacent to Berger's office, leading to the replacement of Strauss's Viennese waltzes with Rosla's sweeping and colorful score. Despite these challenges, The Thief of Baghdad remains a notable cinematic work, earning a spot on Roger Ebert's esteemed list. The film's journey, shaped by wartime redirection and creative changes, adds a unique layer to its history, a testament to the complexities of filmmaking. Filmed at London's Denham Studios, which had recently merged with J. Arthur Rank's nearby Pinewood Studios, the 1940 movie found its roots in a strategic collaboration. The production, originally intended for Africa, shifted to the Arizona desert due to World War II, showcasing a market scene dominated by female writers. Despite facing budgetary strains and script uncertainties, the film secured three Academy Awards in a historic Oscar feat. Amidst the challenges, producer Alexander Korda's tenacity led to six different directors working on the project, including his brother Zoltan Korda and art director William Cameron Menzies. The movie's tumultuous production journey reflected the demands of Corda, directorial changes, and wartime relocations. Notably, Vivian Lee's initial casting as the princess underwent a pivotal change in late 1938, and the film marked the first use of blue screens in cinematic history. The Thief of Baghdad, known for its disruptions during production, earned a spot on Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. Facing wartime redirection and creative changes, it became a testament to the complexities of filmmaking. 
Notably, the title of the film itself had historical significance, as Alexander Korda negotiated the rights over dinner with Douglas Fairbanks, who owned the rights to the 1924 version. Reportedly the favorite film of Francis Ford Coppola, The Thief of Baghdad holds a unique place in cinematic history. The intricacies of its production, the strategic shift to the U.S., and the negotiation of rights with Fairbanks add layers to its story. It remains a notable piece, recognized for its achievements, and continues to resonate in the world of cinema.